Let's say you want to get started with this crypto thing, but you have no clue where to start. You don't know your Bitcoin from your Ethereum, but you don't want to miss out on owning a slice of something that could be huge in the future. You have a little bit of money saved up and you've heard of great fortunes being made with Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and maybe Shib Inu, but you have a problem. Understanding it is like learning another language and you have no idea how to invest into it. Well, don't worry, I have you covered. Instead of showering you in all the confusing terms they use, I'm gonna keep it extremely simple. So in this video, through the timestamps below, I'm gonna quickly explain why the underlying blockchain technology is exciting, but most importantly, valuable, what the core different types of crypto are, and then walk you through step-by-step step on how to set up an account, and then how to get money onto your account fee-free. If you watch through to the end, You'll even find out how to claim $25 of free crypto while doing so. And in addition, how to make money passively in three different ways through the benefits on your brand new crypto account. So why is the technology of blockchain that underpins crypto seen as valuable in the first place? Well, the technology is called blockchain and its sole purpose is to remove middlemen from our life. You'll find them everywhere in every single sort of transaction thinkable and they actually cost you a lot more than you might think. Examples would be every time you use your car to pay for something while out shopping, the card company is charging the shop a fee every time you use your card. This shop then has to pass on the cost by increasing the price of its products, meaning that you, the purchaser, are paying the middleman fee. On a larger scale, we have fiat currency, so money that your government is issuing. It's one of the biggest middleman operations possible. The cost to individuals here is that the government can print new money whenever it wants, which rapidly devalues any money that you have saved up. But then it's not all about money. Think of information transactions. Every time you go to see a doctor, they'll need to access your medical records. But commonly, this information might get stuck at another hospital that they can't access, or even worse, it could be lost. This comes at a cost to you as you either lose time or worse, end up getting worse treatment. In all of these examples, there is friction being created by middlemen. If we could remove these middlemen, we could either get the same service for a cheaper price, or we could get a better service for the same price. This, in a nutshell, is the promise of blockchain technology. And the bullish view is that consumers will opt for blockchain solutions in the future over the middlemen solutions, as they're more convenient and they are of a lower cost. So you understand blockchain technology and what it's trying to deliver, but how on earth do you go about starting to understand every single cryptocurrency, crypto token, and altcoin? Well, the honest answer is you can't. There's over 14,000 of them. It's a bit like wanting to know about every single company around the world. It's just not possible. But what we can do is understand the different sectors they fall into, a bit like how traditional companies do. They either all fall into technology, finance, healthcare, energy, or maybe another sector. Well, you can think of the same way about the crypto space. To keep this super straightforward, I'm gonna break crypto down into four factions. They are cryptocurrency, layer one networks, layer two protocols, and stable coins. Fancy names are no, but it's really straightforward, I promise but think of each category like this. For cryptocurrency, the clue is in the name. It's currency which is designed to be a medium of exchange. Except with this currency, there is no large overlord sat in the middle controlling it all. No one can print more of it, no one can counterfeit it, and no one can suddenly change the rules of the game. Examples of these are Bitcoin, Litecoin, XRP, and Monero. This brings us on to layer one networks and layer two protocols. Think of these two as different sides of the same coin. They are opposites, but at the very same time, they depend on each other. Think of layer one networks as a network of roads across the country. This is the infrastructure to facilitate transport. If the layer one networks were the roads, then layer two protocols would be the different sorts of road users you would find. People would use these roads for different reasons, driving to work, transporting goods, shared transport, cycling for exercise, and maybe fetching me my delivery, for example. All of these different methods of transport are taking the benefit of the infrastructure, which is the road, the layer one network. While the same concept goes to crypto, the vast amount of crypto projects are not interested in creating their very own infrastructure in order to support their objectives. It's far easier to piggyback off an existing layer one network, just like how I'm piggybacking off YouTube in order to publish this video on my YouTube channel. YouTube is a platform and I am the user. Examples of layer one networks include Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, Terra, and Avalanche. They are all laying the road in the hopes to attract layer two protocols to their platform. So what are these layer two protocols trying to achieve? Well, to put it simply, 
anything. Anything where they believe they can provide a better solution where an existing middleman structure exists. To give you some examples to bring this to life, here are three different layer two protocols built on Ethereum. Take Polymarket as a classic example of where they're removing a greedy middleman. Polymarket is a decentralized information markets platform, which in plain English is a betting platform where there is no spread in the middle for the host to take. The saying, the house always wins, doesn't apply here as there's simply no house. But it's not just historical businesses which are being disrupted, it's also future ones. Take Engine, for example. They are paving the way for digital items to be bought, sold, or exchanged in the future. Think of skins in a game like Fortnite, or maybe owning your very own Nike Air Jordans in the metaverse in 2057. The last example is really straightforward. Aave is paving the way to allow borrowing and lending direct between peers without the need for a middleman. The lending and borrowing market is colossal in size and it's a key profit driver for banks and just think how much you pay in fees to borrow money for a mortgage. Well, Aave is working on finding a solution to leveraging blockchain technology to make this cheaper and more convenient. These are just a tiny handful of projects happening on the Ethereum layer one network, which has over 3000 projects going on. And this is just Ethereum. There's of course lots of projects going on other layer one networks like Solana and Cardano. If you look at the top 10 crypto tokens by market cap, then you'll notice that the vast majority of these fall into one of these three categories and the remaining are stable coins. If you're looking to invest into crypto, then there is no use in purchasing stable coins as they do exactly what they say on the tin. They are stable, meaning their value won't go up or down as they are pegged to an existing fiat currency. Tether and USD coin are both pegged to the US dollar. So if you bought $10 worth, then in a year's time, you will still have $10 worth. For investing purposes, avoid purchasing stable coins. But a valid question you might have is, how and why do these tokens have value after all? Well, that's actually a fantastic question and it's hotly debated. With a traditional company, you would look at many metrics, but the main one would be how much money is that company making? We don't have this as crypto as they simply don't make a profit. Outside of the general hype around a project, crypto tokens derive their value and price for the demand of their given token. Why someone would want to hold these tokens fall into two different camps. The first is that they're using them for utility, so maybe using polymarkets to trade on their betting platform. Or secondly, they could be speculating that they'll be worth more in the future, meaning they're waiting for someone else to buy it off them for a higher price in the future. Pure speculation is the biggest criticism that the space faces so far. Critics will point to the fact that the majority of sales are based on the greater full concept, where someone is only buying it with the view that someone else will pay more for it at a later date, ignoring any intrinsic value, such as how much money is it making, that you'll see with stocks and shares. I would say that this is a fair criticism of this space, but it's no different to people investing in companies that are yet to make a profit. Think of companies like Tesla, WeWork or Uber, for example. My personal view is that we could be seeing something similar to the dot-com bubble that happened in the late 90s, where the internet was a new technology, but we weren't sure how it was gonna look in the future. Even though there were many ups and downs during this period, these internet companies have dominated with examples like eBay, Amazon and Google all coming from this space. Crypto is widely considered extremely risky as a form of investment but you can't expect high rewards without high risk. So now you have a good understanding of crypto, how do you go about creating an account? Well, let me take you through this process step by step. Personally, I choose to use crypto.com due to some fantastic perks, which I'll go through shortly, but they also have a really clean and simple interface on their app. But most importantly of all, they are known for their safety. There have been multiple examples of unsafe platforms and exchanges in the crypto space over the last 10 years, but crypto.com has gone all out when it comes to security. They have over half a billion in insurance for internal hacks and external events, such as natural disasters, for example. But then the app itself has all the safety features you would want, two-fax authentication and finger scan confirmations. This all making it very hard for anyone else to try and perform a transaction from your very own app. So let me show you how to create an account step by step. First and most importantly, find my crypto.com referral link in the description below. This way, when you set up your account, you're gonna get $25 of crypto for free, even before you deposit. So if you just find one of my videos, scroll down to where it says uh, free sign up, click on it, and you should get a page that looks something like this. My referral code's in there already, so that's okay. I just need to enter my email address, which I'll put in here. And then click I'm not a robot, in case you're not a robot. If you are, then you're a bit stuck. And then you might have to go through some security messages, which I'm gonna do now.
And what it'll do now, it'll ask you to go and download the crypto.com app. So go over to the app store. So let me go there now and then search for crypto.com. Crypto.com and just hit search. To make you aware, there's a few different crypto.com apps. So you want the one that says crypto.com by BTC ETH. You don't want to click the one that says buy uh, crypto.com DeFi or crypto.com exchange. So download the crypto.com buy sell pay. And then once you finally download it, go to opening the app. So here, so open the app and then it'll ask you to sign up. So hit sign up and then put in your email address. Some of you might be able to auto populate it like I have and click on continue and click continue. Then might have to do the inferred little thing to make sure you can pass as you're not a human. Fantastic. You now got to go to your email to activate this account. So go into your emails, you should have an email there and it'll say login. And then it'll redirect you back to the crypto.com app. After this, it'll just give you some messages. So just skip on through quickly. Just accept the terms and conditions if you want to. Click continue. And then you're asked to enter your mobile number to just to verify this for security reasons. So just put in your mobile number. Click send verification code. And then when you get center, yeah, there you go. So now I can just click that and it'll automatically populate it. And it now says my phone is verified. So tap anywhere to go continue. And then it'll ask if you want to opt into their emails. I'm not going to tick the box, but you can. I'm going to hit continue. Okay, now at this point, it's going to go through KYC, which is know your customer. So you are going to need some ID. So you need your full legal name, an ID, and then to take a selfie at the end of it. So give me a second. Hit continue. So put in your full legal name. And hit continue. It'll then ask you uh, for some sort of verification. So you can have identity card, passport, or driver's license. I'm going to do a uh, passport because I've got one here. So let me do that quickly. Enable camera, allow. And then you can submit a photo and it'll say uploading. Right, next is take a selfie. So give me a second. So once you've done this, this is all you can do straight away. It'll then say they'll notify you once your verification is complete. My girlfriend actually did hers about two weeks ago and it only took 40 minutes. So uh, I'm expecting it to take about an hour. So we'll come back and see, but it can take up to 24 hours. So don't worry if it's not done within an hour. Right now it says I'm verified. When you log in, it'll ask you to set a passcode. So quickly set a passcode. Then you'll have to do it again to confirm it. And there we go, passcode complete. After this, I'll ask you to select your currency. So for me, it's British pound, GBP. Hit continue. And it'll say your payment currency is set as GBP for me. Tap anywhere to continue. As you can see, we're now set up now. So we just click to get rid of this here. Uh, do not allow. And as you can see, your account now has $25 worth of free crypto in there. It's converted that into British pounds for me. So I've got £17.86 in my crypto.com account. So once you've done this, you'll now want to put money onto your account fee free. I've got to say you actually can do this by your card for the first 30 days free. However, what I'm going to show you to do is actually how to use the bank transfer method, which is free for your first 30 days and then forever. So I'd rather show you that way so you're used to it so you can use it in the future as well. So what you need to do is you need to go down to account at the bottom. And then what you'll see is it'll have three functions. I'll have crypto wallet, crypto earn and fiat wallet. So you want to go to fiat wallet and then you'll want to set up a new currency. So click on that. And then for me, it's British pounds. And then uh, accept the terms and conditions as long as you're happy with them. Hit next. And then what it's going to do, it's going to ask you to verify your residential address. Then go ahead and hit get started. And then just quickly enter the information here. So do, do, do. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to blur this out so you don't know where I live. Yeah. Don't say it out loud. <laughs> Nearly done. postcode done so submit address and then it might take some time to think about it yeah address verification and then once it's done we should be good to go so we'll just wait two seconds for it to happen and there we go bank transfer is now ready tap anywhere to continue right so now that currency is set up all you need to do is to hit transfer 
and then you need to hit deposit, okay? And then yeah, deposit in British pounds. And then it'll come up with a load of information on this screen. I am gonna have to blur it out because this will be different for everybody. But what you'll have is you'll have a unique code or reference for the bank name, bank account holder name, sort code, account number, and then the bank address. How much information this you need for your bank will vary, but you'll need probably most of it. So please write it down and make sure it's accurate. I think all of it's the same for everybody except for the unique reference code. What I'll do is I'll go over to my banking screen from before and I'll just talk over it for now. So I'm gonna input these details into my bank, which might look different to yours. So mine is asking for the recipient name, which I'm putting as BCB Payments Limited. Then it's asking for their account number, please do check that this is right. Then it's going to ask for the sort code. And then finally, it's going to ask for that reference number, which will be different for everybody. So I'm purposely going to blur mine so you don't use mine by mistake. Make sure you do this correctly. I do have one little tip for you. If you're nervous about sending money to a crypto platform for the first time, then seriously consider only sending a small amount first. If you want to put in £100 or £1,000, why not put in 10% first just to test the water? So 10 or 100 pounds, depending on your amount. I can personally remember the first time I sent crypto and I was really nervous because the money disappeared from my bank account and then suddenly appear after a while my crypto.com account. But that bit in between is quite nervous. So seriously do consider it. Anyway, to show you this works, I'm gonna send 750 quid to my crypto.com account. You've probably been watching me do that on the other side of the screen right now. And what I'll do now, I'll put a message at the bottom of the screen now to tell you how long it actually took for my money to go from my bank to my crypto.com account, just to have a steer on how long it might take. So while editing this section, I completely forgot to have one other tip for you. If it's the first time you've moved money to a crypto platform, your bank is likely going to block the transfer. So what I would do is don't leave it to see if it goes through automatically. I would ring up your bank straight away to tell them to clear the payment and let it go to crypto.com. Otherwise, you'll wait for a few days and then you'll chase them and then it might take some time. So I would do that straight away, but it's completely up to you. So if I go into my app now, uh, if I go to accounts, you'll see that the £750 has now arrived. So what we need to do now is buy some cryptocurrency. So if you go into fiat wallets, and then if you wanted to buy cryptocurrency, you'd go to the top left-hand side and hit buy crypto. And then you've got a search option as well as a list of all the cryptocurrencies that crypto.com have to offer. If you can't see the cryptocurrency you want, then go to the search option top right. Let's just say I wanted to uh, buy Chili's, for example. So if I could type in the full name and it'll come up at the top, or you can go by its shorter name. So a bit like how Bitcoin is BTC, Chili's it's CHZ. So if I go CHZ, it'll also come up at the top. So if you wanted to buy Chili's, click on Chili's. And then at the bottom, make sure it's in the currency that you want to buy it in. So it's on Euro, so I'm going to G GBP. And then select how many you want to buy. I think 750 quid's worth is 3,800. No, a little bit less now, because it must have gone up in price. 3,700, a bit less. Let's go 3,680, yeah, just about. So if I wanted to buy that, then I would click Buy Chili's. And then what it'll do, it'll give you a countdown of 15 seconds to lock in that offer. If you don't make it in time, then that order will cancel basically and you have to re-put in the offer where you might get a better or worse price depending on what the market's doing. So yeah, see you go, time expired. Personally, I'm not gonna buy this as I wanna put the money somewhere else, which is my crypto.com card. But now there are some critical things you need to know before I finish. There are three key features that you need to be aware of as they are fantastic ways to earn crypto for free. The first, as you might have seen before, is Crypto.com's Visa-backed debit cards. Without going into too much detail, these are Visa debit cards which give you a rebate in crypto every time you spend something on that card. The percentage you get as a rebate depends on the tier of card, which are five different tiers of. Luckily for you, the lowest level one is Midnight Blue, which is completely free and gives you a 1% rebate on any purchases. But the remaining cards have a requirement for you to take Crypto.com's native token, which is CRO, to unlock them. As an example, if you wanted to unlock the Ruby Red card, which is the next level up, which will double your rebate to 2%, you need to stake 300 quid's worth of CRO. So let's say you've bought 300 pounds worth of CRO. I'd go to accounts. I then go to my crypto wallet. And then I would select crypto.com coin at the top. So I'll select it here. And if you scroll down, it will say upgrade. Hit upgrade. And then I'll ask you to pick one of the following options here. So you can see all the cards from the top tier, which is 300,000 of CRO. But if you wanted Ruby Red, we go to the very bottom one and then you'd be able to hit the bottom, select CRO amount to continue. And that's how you'd unlock the card. 
Once you've done this, you'll quickly be able to access your virtual crypto.com card, but you'll also get a physical version delivered to your house. If we go to the bottom right-hand corner on the card function, you will see that somewhere I have if we go to the top right, you'll see that I've got the Jade Green card, which gives me a 3% rebate. In terms of how much I've had in terms of rebates, I've only had my Jade Green card for about four weeks now. So if I go to Refer and Get, go down to the next tab, you'll see that I've had just under $40 worth in free rebate. So it does add up quite quickly. The next passive way to make crypto is by staking the crypto you've bought on crypto.com's crypto earn feature. As a warning, not all crypto tokens can be staked, but the majority of the major ones can, including Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, and Solana, and quite a lot of other ones actually. You can stake your crypto for either a flexible period, meaning you can withdraw them whenever you want, or you can lock them in for one, two, or three months. The longer you stake them for, the higher the rebate you get, but also the higher the tier of your card, the higher the rebate you get also. For me, as I stake Bitcoin for three months with a Jade Green card, I'm currently getting 6.5% back each year for my Bitcoin staked. So far, I've made just over £90 from crypto and feature, and I think it's definitely worth it if you're planning on holding your crypto for the long term. And lastly, we have Supercharger. Supercharger is what they class as a liquidity pool. Basically, it's very similar to staking, but you can only use CRO for the Supercharger events. You can add as much or as little CRO as you want, and you can stake it at any time or pull it out at any time also. Your reward is a percentage back in the crypto token which the event is being held for. For me at the moment, it's currently Luna. It's a great way to gain different tokens which you might not have previously bought before. If you want a full rundown of all the features on the app, then feel free to check out this video on the screen right now. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.